China that had yeah. gave birth to twins at like uh, in her 60s. But as the well. interesting thing about the 61 year old woman, by then her uh, fertile eggs have pretty much disappeared. She had to be artificially implanted with a younger egg from a donor. Hey, I give props to her for 61 and still knocking boots out there. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Is that bad? Oh, that was wild. Oh, no. <laughs> For some reason or other, have you noticed he seems to be guiding us through this day? You what else what? is on your yeah, mind? What else you got, Mario? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I, <laughs> you threw me off there. No, um, there's been some struggling going on, Dick, lately. Okay, Th yes, through uh, with marriages and a lot. And statistics show, of course, that people are are getting divorced more and um, and getting divorced a lot quicker now in their early 20s, of course. But our next guest, we have a guest coming on that. She has a theory or some sort of philosophy of having a starter marriage. In other words, being married for a few years first and then without having any kids and seeing if it works so you risk not having a divorce. So without further ado, please welcome the author of Starter Marriages, Pamela Paul. Oh, a little tricky. Pamela. How are you doing? Please. Hi, Pamela. How are you? The first thing that comes Pamela. to my mind, Pamela looks about 17 years old. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's like taking marriage advice from Blossom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let, let's, let's start off. What is a starter marriage? Your definition. A starter marriage is generally a marriage that lasts for five years or less and definitely ends before children begin. So what, what's the big difference between a starter marriage and, say, oh, a failed marriage? Well, <laughs> because they sound very similar to me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a starter marriage is a failed marriage, but nobody goes into a starter marriage thinking that they're going to get out and divorce and trade up to something better. Right. You know, unlike a starter home, you don't think, you know, this is just temporary. Everyone who goes into a starter marriage thinks that they're getting married for a lifetime. Hello. Pamela, right. the research they gave us tells us that you had a starter marriage. Why'd you get a divorce? Well, like four out of five divorces, um, often one person makes the decision and the other person is caught totally off guard. So yeah. in my case, um, it wasn't my decision. Um, so I did not plan or expect yeah. to find myself divorced at the age of 28. You know, the, the first thing that came to my mind, too, is what's the difference then between a starter marriage and just living together? Yeah. Why do you have to go through the procedures of tying a knot and the ceremony? Why not just live together then? Well, I think that's a good question. I mean, I think that marriage is a very particular thing, and ideally, it should be a lifelong vow. So if you're not prepared to spend the next 50 or 60 years with someone, and you're 25 and thinking about getting married, why not live together first? Why not, you know, see if you get to get along in the day-to-day -day before you make that kind of commitment? Yeah. 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 All right, um, I'm just wondering then, with the start of marriage, in a way, it seems like you're kind of saying that you, you go to the altar, you stand before some kind of official, if not a man or a woman of the cloth, and you say, I promise to love, honor, and cherish till death do us part. Nah, just kidding. It seems like it should be a bigger, more serious thing. No, no, like you're, once you've made that commitment, you've made that commitment. No, you're right, because it's like your vows aren't taken seriously right. anymore then. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think that, you know, hopefully people will look at these number of starter marriages and realize that marriage is, you know, a very difficult obligation and that they should be prepared to make sacrifices right. and be prepared to stick it out for the long run before they make that kind of On the of other vow. hand, I want you to know that I think if somebody is in a starter marriage and things are terrible, no one should suffer through that. A terrible relationship. Relationship where you're just sticking it out for the kids or the vows or whatever. I think let, that's a terrible mistake. Let me get as well. into a, a, a little deeper thing here. I want to find out. Did I hear you say you're 28 or were 28? I when was 28 when I was divorced. All right. That's in my book. That's young. young. Yeah. That some people's work. That's you know medium age or whatever. No, that's young. But that's why young. are people? I felt young. <laughs> yeah, but why are people getting divorces so quickly, so easily? What's what's happened? Well, you know, I think on the one hand, you could say that they're not trying hard enough, but it's very hard to make the kind of sacrifices and compromises that a marriage requires if you feel like your marriage wasn't the right decision to begin with. Is it more acceptable now than it was in the old days? You know, I don't think so at all. And I think that particularly for this generation, which is the first children of divorce generation, divorce right. is a really awful thing to have to look at and think, oh my God, you know, first my parents and now me. So I found that the people who I interviewed across the country who had gone through divorce, you know, at age 25 or 30, felt like they were really stigmatized. They said they felt like a failure. No, so, yeah, no, my, but see, my... I see society is still accepting divorce uh, 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 yeah, more so easily I. now. I see, I, I don't agree in that sense, well, but are there people now, though, in their 30s and uh, in their 20s putting marriage off more because of that? Or? Well, 
Well, not as much as you would think. The average woman today gets married at the age of 25, and that's only three years older than she got married 100 years ago. Really? Which I think is pretty shocking. Yeah. I thought it would be a lot higher. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. but 100 yeah. years ago, the average lifespan was only 50 yeah, years. Exactly. So that's right. not long. Now you're looking at a 60. I mean, the reality is, marriage used to be a 15 or 20 year long right. thing, that's and then exactly someone it. died. And now marriage is expected a 50, to last. 50, 60 year thing, absolutely. Is there any upside to this? I'm, this seems like a very modern thought to older, mature people. To young people say, yeah, I've heard of that, and so forth and so on. They know people. My middle son is in his 30s, didn't get married until he was like 32. His wife was 31. That's a late start. But is this quickie divorce thing or this... I hate that word, starter marriage. Yeah, I, I mean, no one likes to think of themselves as having a starter marriage. It, it sounds kind of frivolous, but the reality is, is that I like to think of it as afterwards you have a new start. You're still young, you don't have children, which I think is really key. You haven't impacted another generation. Yeah. And you can take the lessons that you learn from your first marriage and hopefully go into a second marriage that would have children and that would last for a lifetime. Will you get married again? And if so, did, did, did the starter marriage help you prepare for your next real marriage? Marriage? Well, I, I haven't gotten married again yet, so I can't speak from experience, okay. but and I, I think, would hope so. I think you bring up a good point with the children, too. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank, thank you very much. much. Appreciate that. Listen, we've got lots of exciting stuff for you today, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Still to come, millions tune in every night to hear her talk about love and romance. What advice does she have for you? Don't miss radio's